QuickBooks Online 2022. Bank rules, one vendor, two expense accounts. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our bank feed practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up a bit to get to the one, two, five percent currently in the home page, otherwise known as the get things done page. The business view as compared to the accountant view, changing to the accountant view is something you can do by going to the cog up top, switch to the accountant view down below. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either here or by jumping to the sample company file that's currently in the accountant view. Back on over to the bank feed practice file, going to the top to open some tabs to put reports in. Right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicating it. Back to the tab to the left, right clicking again, duplicating again. As that is thinking, let's see where the reports are located over here in the sample company in the accountant view, which is on the left hand side under reports. Back on over to the business view. It's still thinking, but that's okay. We're going to go forward. Business overview where the reports are at into the reports. We're going to open a report, a well-known and highly distinguished report known as the balance sheet. Going into the balance sheet, ranging the change in up top from a 101 to 112, 31 to 1 and run. Tab into the right, tab to the right people. Going down to the business overview, reports, closing the hamburger, the other report known as, known by profit and loss, sometimes called the income statement. It's got many names. It's, it's famous. 010121 to 123121. Run it. Going to go to the first tab now. Go into the first tab. And we're going to go into our bank feed stuff, which under the business view is in the bookkeeping area, left hand side, transactions up top, banking tab up top. If you were in the accounting view or the accountant view, it would be in the banking tab and the banking tab, the double banking tab, tab to the left, tab to the top. And then we're going to close up the hamburger. We're looking at the checking account. We're going to, we're going to set up some more rules here uh, related to this time an expense form or an expense amount that we would like to distinguish uh, in some way, shape, or form uh, to apply it out to two accounts, possibly applying it out to, say, two locations or something like that, and trying to pick up a piece of the description to be able to distinguish between the two. So, for example, here's an example of, of an item here from the same area. And let's just imagine that it was it was like some type of expense type of form, but I want to pick up the fact that one is for I'm buying it from one location versus I'm buying it for another location and I might be able to determine by something in the description to help me out with that even though it's coming from the same vendor. Now sometime that might be in the, just the description that you have here or possibly even in the text and numbers on the right hand side all that junk that is within the description. Remember as you're looking at these kind of rules too you might want to make sure that you hit the cog drop down and that you're seeing the full description. You want to show the bank details in the memo, in other words, so that you can use some of this kind of stuff that in the bank memo possibly to break out and be more defined or specific in the type of rules that you can apply then. So, so we're going to apply these out uh, based on the difference in the description, even though we have the same vendor imagining that they're going to be going to our two different locations. I'd like to make the two different locations both with a distinction in class tracking as well as a different account for them. We turned on class tracking in prior presentations and you should be following along with that. But if you haven't, then I'll go ahead and change it. I assume obviously you might be like sick or something and that might have caused you to miss some of our stuff here. So I'm going to right click up top and duplicate the tab to show you where the class tracking is. So it's then going to be in the cog up top in the cog and then we're going to go into the account and settings on the left advanced settings on the left and then we're going to go into the class tracking right there boom turn that so you have a green thing on it green means on because it's go green is go time green is quickbooks go so we're going to go back to the tab to the left i'm also going to change it to the uh, accountant view because I might have to add an account and the business view that's where I think they are falling short currently but I feel like they'll fix it at some point 
not because they listen to me or anything, but someone, someone will they'll listen to somebody. Banking, banking, I'm gonna close up the hamburger and then go on down. And so let's pick up these two items and I'm gonna have a difference between these two just based on, in this case, it's in the text, but I, again, it could be anywhere in the memo where you might have some difference that could help you to distinguish between the two. Now notice the next thing you might ask is like, well, do I want to have a different vendor for the two items, even though it's really the same vendor that I'm buying from, but if I have a different vendor, it might help me to sort my transactions you know, by vendor uh, a little bit more specifically. So we could have the same vendor or maybe we put a different vendor here. Notice instead of having just Primerica, I might say I wanna make it Primerica 01, adding the distinguishing factor from the other, the other item that's from the same vendor. So I'm gonna hit the drop down and let's say we add a new one and I'm gonna make this Primerica 1 and save it. Now you could have the exact same vendor and just break it out by the differences uh, in, in the memo with the rules without having a difference in the vendor. That's a matter of preference. And then I'm gonna set up a new account just to make, I'm gonna make up just some expense account. Gonna hit the drop down for our example problem purposes. It's gonna be an expense type of account this time. And let's see what, what we wanna put it to. I'll just say that it's gonna go to, I, I did that. Let's go to other business, other business, payroll, rent let's let's take it to rent let's go to repairs and maintenance repairs and maintenance that'll work repairs and maintenance l1 so i'm going to put l1 to indicate that it's going to be going to that location i'm going to say location one i could indicate the location for example here in the account name i could make one repairs and maintenance and then two sub accounts repairs and maintenance l1 and l2 to have the sub accounts give me the information of the added detail of location and we're going to look at the class tracking as well. So those are some options you could think about. We're going to save that. And then, so that's what we have. I'm going to put this into the class of location number one. This class field would only be on there if you turned on the class tracking. Let's make a, we could make then a rule for it. Rule time. Going to make a rule. And I'm going to add in the rule that it's got it's got the distinguishing factor in the rule, not just basically the name, but the distinguishing factor. So I could tell which rule it's looking at. It's going to be a money out rule. We're going to apply it just simply to the checking. It's going to have all of the conditions that will be applied on down below. It's going to have the description and it contains and I want it to contain not just not just this, but the distinguishing factors that are going to be in the description, which could be here up front, or it could be something that's going to be further down in like the description, like just the numbers or something like that. So I have to make sure that I include in it the distinguishing factors. Note that if it says it contains the distinguishing factors, you might say Primerica, and it might be the last couple digits in the description, and you could still tack those on, and hopefully it would pick up and distinguish based on that information in other words it doesn't have to have a, a huge long description in order to pick up the the distinguishing factor hopefully because it says contains and not is exactly the way it is on on the description okay so that's the idea we're going to say it's going to be an expense form that doesn't mean that it's going to an expense account that means we're going to use an expense form which is like a check form without the check number when it actually records it it's going to go into the repairs and maintenance l1 account that we set up the payee is going to have a vendor that's a distinguishing vendor which we could have put as just one one vendor without the distinguishing characteristics or we can add the distinguishing characteristics having two vendors even though they're really the same vendor to give us a, another way to break out the data class we added to l1 let's save it and close it save it and close it and then let's do the other one before we look at the reports here the other one is this one same same vendor but we're going to say it's going to go to a different area and i'm going to have the distinguishing factor in this case having life after it so life is going to be the distinguishing factor i don't need a different vendor i could use the same vendor and just have a distinguishing factor in the rule, which will then have the same vendor then go into different accounts. Or I can add a different vendor if I so choose, and let's add a different vendor, even though it's really the same vendor, and that might help me to sort my, some of my data if I, if I want to sort it by vendor in some instances. That's an internal choice, you could do it either way. 
I'm gonna hit the drop down and we're gonna go up to here again and say I want a, a new account because I want to say repairs and maintenance L2. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be an expense type of account, expense. And let's say repairs and maintenance down here, repairs and maintenance. But I'm gonna add an L2 for location number two. And we could do that by having one repairs and maintenance as the parent and then two accounts that are gonna indicate location one and two with sub accounts or I can have the two accounts here. We'll also break them out by class as we will see when we get to the income statement after having recorded this and created the rule. So let's save it and close it. And let's make a rule. I'm gonna make a rule. This is what you have to do, QuickBooks. This is what you have to do. This is what I say. It's gonna be a money out rule. It's gonna go into the checking account. All conditions, description contains. It can't just be Primerica. It has to have that distinguishing factor. That's the key, which could just be the life. It could be the last couple digits like we talked about before, but that's gonna be the key to break it out to have two different expense accounts for the same vendor by using some other stuff in the memo. It's gonna be an expense type of um, form we're gonna be applying it out to. Here's the category that we set up. It's gonna be Primerica, the payee, which I could have just put Primerica only, but I made a different vendor for the different accounts that are gonna be applied to. And let's do it, let's save it and close it and check it out. Saved it and closed it. If I go to the rules, the rules tab over here and say what, what rules have been made, then these are my new rules. If I wanted to change them, we could of course edit them. Now note, if I go back to the banking area, it actually did not apply out this rule. So it's not, it's not doing what we would expect. The rule has not been applied. If that's the case, sometimes we can go back to the rules tab over here and change the description uh, character. So I'm gonna go down and say, okay, let's go back into the edit field right here for these two items. And instead of using the description, I'm gonna use the bank text. So there, there could be some distinguishing factors. The bank text, for example, might be longer than what QuickBooks sees as the description. You might be asking what's the difference between those two. So they, they could try to truncate kind of the description. So I'm gonna use that and see if it picks it up. And I'm gonna do the same for this second one. I'm gonna change the description to the bank text and then say, okay. And then go back to the banking tab and see if it applies it out now, if it's using the bank text. So you can see there, it applies it out this time. So let's go ahead and add a couple of those based on these two rules. I'm gonna add this one and then add this one. So two have been added. And then let's go to the banking. Let's go back to the balance sheet, I mean. That's what I meant to say. Balance sheet, let's run it to refresh it. Make sure we're working with fresh stuff. And then let's custom, let's, let's go into, you know, let's go into the checking account. Get it straight. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. Follow me. I know where I'm going. Hold on a second. Customize up top. And then I'm going to filter it. And then we're gonna go into the name dropdown. And so now here, if I filter it, I've got the, I've got the different filtering options. So I got Primerica now, Primerica Life, Primerica 01. I could have just had one Primerica and had all of it in there, but notice you got some differences with the filtering options if you set up a different vendor, even though they're the same vendor in essence for the different rules that you're gonna be applying and the different accounts that you will be applying out to. So now here's the one with the repairs and maintenance uh one is that the one we set up i believe it is i don't have one for the repairs and maintenance two so let me did i not add, i thought i added another one let's go back on over and say i want to add the repairs and maintenance two let's add that one and then go back on over i might have accidentally added something that i shouldn't have run it again run it again so there's the repairs and maintenance one and two it's an expense type of form if i go back into it it's gonna be into an expense type form, which is a form that's kind of like a, a check, but without the check number. And there it is on the source document that has been created. Closing this back out, scrolling up to the top, back then to the balance sheet. We're gonna go to the tab to the right now. Profit and loss, run it again. And then I'm gonna go down and say we added this one repairs and maintenance and one and two so now we've got the same vendor going to these two different locations we also broke it out by class which i'm going to do by opening up another report going to the tab up top duplicating it 
Reports on the left hand side, left hand. There's my left hand, that's right next to my left hand on my left. I'm gonna close up the hamburger and then I'm scrolling down. I'm looking for, I'm looking for the P&L by class. There it is, P&L by class. P&L by class running, let's do a ranging, changing, 01, 01, 21, 12, 31, 21, run it. And now we've got our breakout by class up top, which might be by different location or something like that, whatever you're trying to distinguish between. And then I can scroll down and say, there's our expense side of things where we've got the repairs and maintenance. So remember, you could break this kind of thing out and notice the second one didn't go to a separate class. That's interesting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change that rule again. So let me go to that first tab again and change the rule. If that doesn't do what you want, you go back to the rule and say, I didn't assign a class to that second one. All these are intentional mistakes, by the way. I'm gonna go into here and say, what if, that, what if someone else made a mistake and I had to go in and fix it like this? then I could then say that I want this going to a class. So it's gonna go to a, there it is, class needs to be two. So it'll work next time, I'm gonna record it. All right, I fixed whoever, like imagining someone else made like a mistake. So then I'm gonna say, if someone else made that kind of mistake like that, then you could go back on over here and say I'll fix it there. It's not gonna fix it here because the rule's already been applied. So I'm gonna run it again. It doesn't change it here because the rule's already been applied, but you can drill down here and reassign it, which you can do for all the unspecified areas if you were using this class tracking. So I'm gonna drill the back down and say, now I gotta fix that because some somebody made an error. I'll fix it though. I know how to fix it. I'm gonna go into here. And I'm just gonna assign it to the proper class, L2. That's where it needs to go. And then save it and close it. Save it and close it scrolling back up back to our reports and then let's uh hold control scroll up again so now it's in the proper class so you could break this stuff out by having the the different the different accounts possibly by location or something like that or department or something like that or you can have one parent account and then the two subsidiary accounts broken out that way and or you can have class tracking which is nice in that instance in that kind of scenario because you could break out your net income bottom line uh, by the by the different classes although of course it takes a bit more work for the data input because you have to add a class pretty much to every transaction to really do it properly so there is that